Hello, good morning, good afternoon and good evening, wherever you are in the world. I hope you are all staying at last, staying safe and staying well. And welcome back to my YouTube channel once again. Thank you for coming back to watch, our, to watch my video. I hope you've all been staying well with your family and my best wishes in this season to you all. Anyways, today again I am going to make another cake recipe. Show you how I make another one of my other cake recipes. This time around is going to be red velvet. I'm sure you know there is a uh, quite a number of cake uh, red velvet cake re recipes all out there, and myself in particular, I have quite uh, at least three or four different recipe or, 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 or processes of red velvet cake that I have. But there's a particular one I kind of use mostly. That's my go-to red velvet cake. I've had a uh, good responses from it, and then. Um, I'm good. I'm, I, I like it, you know, and that's that process. I'm going to show you how I do today. It is how I do my red velvet cake recipe. If you know how a different way that works for you, great. But this is a video of how I do my own red velvet cake recipe. I have got my ingredients laid out here again as usual. I've got 288 grams of self-raising flour. I've got 225 grams of um, butter, room temperature butter. I've got 230 grams of granulated um, sugar or caster sugar. And I've got five medium sized eggs. I've got cocoa powder. I'll be using one tablespoonful of that. I've got bicarbonate of soda. Again, I will be using a 0 0.5 teaspoon of that. That's half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of, bicarbonate of soda. And uh, I've got salt. I've been, I'm going to be using half a teaspoon of salt. I've got vanilla extract. That I'm going to be using one teaspoon of. I've got white wine vinegar. I'm going to be using one teaspoon of that. And I've got um, buttermilk. I'm going to be using 193 ml of that. And of course, I've got um, red food coloring. I'll be using about one, one to one point five teaspoon of that. Yes, that's my um, ingredients all um, identified, labeled, and um, mentioned. In respect of buttermilk, yes, the buttermilk is sold on its own. However, if you find that you do not have buttermilk at home, you can and you have lemon and uh, uh, full um, milk, fresh milk at home. You can um, use your lemon and um, fresh milk to make your own homemade buttermilk. That is one cup of full fat milk, fresh milk, and two tablespoonful of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Mix them together and set aside for about five minutes, and you will have your buttermilk. My oven is already preheated to gas mat number three. That's an, uh, an equivalent of 160 degrees centigrade, um, as degree in centigrade. So uh, now I'm going now to commence the process, the mixing and the baking process. To my self-raising flour, I'm not going to be using baking powder in it because it is self-raising, which means it already contains um, Raisin agent in it, that's uh, um, baking powder. It already has baking powder in it, so I'm not going to use uh, an addition of baking powder in it. But I'm going to add my half a teaspoonful of salt at this stage. I'm now going to add my cocoa powder, that's one tablespoonful of cocoa powder. And then whisk together and sieve. I like to sieve my flour, my brine this. I like to sieve it to incorporate air into it. This allows my cake or contributes to my contributes to the fluffiness in my in 
my cake when it is completely baked. It, and also, it helps you to get rid of any external or unwanted particles in your flour. Because if it is sieved, you can capture that from the sieve and get rid of it. I'm going to sieve my flour three times. Well, achieve um, the result I aim for. That's the second time round. my flour done. In most of my cake recipes, I don't use my egg whole. I separate my egg whites from my egg yolks and use them, apply them to the but, uh, mixture at uh, different stages in the process. So at this stage, I am going to now separate my egg whites from my egg yolk. And now I'm not going to remove any unwanted chunk from my egg whites. I don't like it, so I get rid of it. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You know when you break eggs, there's some white clumps. I don't know what they are, but um, I try my best as. as best as I can to get rid of it so that my egg white is left clear, completely clear without any clumps in it. That's what I do actually with all my cakes. I take a lot of care and attention in baking and creating my cakes. Now, we will now commence with the mixing process, but now I'm going to cream the butter and the sugar until it is fluffy, soft, creamy, and pale. So we're now going to cream, begin creaming the cake and the butter and the um, castor sugar. So we're going to cream it until when the butter is pale. As it is currently yellow at the moment, so till it is cream. I mean pale white or creamy so this should usually take about um, seven to ten minutes at intervals it is important to scrape down your bowl to ensure that all part of the mixture is captured So ensure your bowl is um, scraped down at intervals to ensure that all part of the mixture is kept. I've been mixing and scraping my bowl for about five minutes now. As you can see, my butter is now white or almost white or creamy. It's no longer yellow or pale yellow. So and it's, oh, it's properly creamed. That's my butter and Castor sugar is properly creamed together. So at this stage now, I'm now going to add the vanilla extract. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract is going to be added and then I will continue to mix. At this stage, I'm, not, I'm now going to add one very important ingredient and it is the red food coloring. I'm using um, sugar flare colors, red extra paste. The red food coloring is very important because it is what makes it red, red velvet cake. So I'll be adding one teaspoonful of it at this time and then see how it goes because it is red velvet. It has to be red, not brown, not 
dark whatever it is so, i hope you can see the color now i like to add my red food coloring at this stage so that the um to enable the food colors to properly be to be properly incorporated into the mixture without having to overbeat my batter at this stage it's okay to beat and beat but by the time you add flour uh -uh, your beating cannot be too much in fact you only need to beat until the flour is properly incorporated so if i added my red food clearing at that stage i won't achieve the result i desire i'm going to add a, a bit of red because by the time i start adding the other ingredients it will lighten it a bit or darken it especially with the cocoa powder so that's all the red food red food chlorine i'm going to add and i'm going to mix until that um, it is until it is properly incorporated my butter and uh, caster sugar mixture is now well incorporated with my red food coloring and it's been mixing now for about um, eight minutes so i'm now going to add my egg yolk one yolk at a time and until it is properly incorporated can you see the luscious redness the luscious redness in this mixture the camera may not be doing it justice but i can assure you that it is so red don't forget that interval to wipe down your bowl to ensure that all aspects of your mixture are captured and are properly incorporated okay so i'm going to whisk again and then we're going to now move on to the next stage of the process at this stage now i will now be adding my flour and my my dry ingredients and my buttermilk into the mixture uh, i'll be alternating them half of the flour then and then the buttermilk and then the remaining half of the flour this is to ensure that all are properly incorporated without um, over mixing and um, obviously you know my flour contained my self-raising flour my dry uh, my, my uh, salt and also cocoa powder so you ensure that you do not over mix your at this stage your mixing um, speed will be slower than before and in order to ensure that as well you don't have splatters everywhere and whilst my flour is doing that i will now be whisking my um egg whites in another stand mixer into a peak consistency I'll be adding my buttermilk now again slowly I love the red luscious red don't forget to wipe down your bowl Very, very important part of this process. The final part of my flour will now go in. And then whisk until just incorporated. Butter is well incorporated. We'll now be moving on to the next process. And another important thing I forgot to mention: you can see that this uh, bit, uh, this particular mixture of the creaming, I used the um, 
what's it called the paddle attachment of the mixer it is important you don't use a whisk attachment so that is beating so it's beating it whereas when i want to whisk my egg whites to pick consistency it is a whisk attachment that has to be used so very important to get that correct Right, now we're now moving to the next process of um, our baking. And we'll now continue with the next process. Remember we haven't added two ingredients yet, which is our um, bicarbonate of soda and uh, uh, red, sorry, uh, white food, um, white um, wine wine vinegar. So at this stage, that's what we are going to be adding. And uh, as you recall, it was a half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda, which is what I'm going to measure into this white. Half a teaspoon, and then white wine vinegar is one teaspoon of that. Pour it over the bicarbonate of soda, and then you can see. It oozes or whatever it is formed. The raising effect because they are all they are interacting with each other. Chemical. Now at this stage, I'm now going to pour that in here. Right. And me this time, I'm not mixing. I'm. Um, Folding. Now I'll be folding my pick egg whites, my whisks and picked egg whites. Fold it in until all is properly incorporated. Oh yes. until all is properly incorporated and then you're done I'm going to be using cake low tin to bake my cake red velvet cake then Remember I said earlier that I've predicted my oven to gas mark 3. I prefer to bake longer to achieve the best result at a lower temperature as opposed to baking shorter with a higher temperature. That is why I use a lower temperature with most of my caking, my baking. And I get the result I require most of the time. So now I'll pour it in my Okay, clove That's my red velvet cake completed. So my oven was is already preheated. So I'm now going to place this. I'm just going to tap it gently. I'm going to place it in the oven to bake for a lower temperature for longer time. That is gas mark three for at least one hour. And I'll see you when it's done. Welcome back. Our cake is now fully baked. And it's a bit cool now. So, red velvet, cake love. And I'm just going to be cutting some slides for you to see the inside, the texture. As you can see, that's the red velvet bluff. I've just finished baking. Look at how moist and red it looks. And look at how tender and sort of fluffy it is. That's a red velvet cake. And I can assure you, it tastes equally amazing. to just love that 
that is my special raw velvet cake recipe and I can assure you it tastes really amazing as well yes if I could say so myself I've got my minute feedback feedback from it all the time yes we are done thank you so much for being with me tonight the grab of our cake tastes so amazing it's it's, it's delicious and as you could see in the earlier video it was so moist and fluffy and soft that's how i love my cake and that's how people that have had the opportunity to have to indulge in this um, cake that is how they they love it and keep coming back for it so thank you for thank you so much for being with me thank you for watching and don't forget to like don't forget to comment if there's something i could have done better in this video please do let me know if there's if you think there's something i've done great also please do let me know in the comment section thank you god bless you and please continue to stay safe and take care with yourselves and your family again don't forget to like don't forget to comment and don't forget to share and subscribe thank you and god bless you take care bye bye